To all who come to this happy podcast, welcome to Fresh Bake Presents, a happy place where each week we combine imagination with our experience to discuss, challenge, and explore all things Disneyland. I am Ron Berner, and with me as always, Mr. Fresh Baked himself, the amazing David Erickson. What's up, Fresh Baked? And this is the Fresh Baked Presents podcast, episode 28. Thank you for joining us where today we discuss the Disneyland Resort status report. We reach into the mailbag to answer your questions and, of course, our five Disneyland Resort status report, TM, TM. Uh, I didn't know it was going to sound like that. Uh, Mr. Erickson, how you doing yeah. today? I'm doing great, Ronnie. How are you? Uh, I am living the dream as usual. Yeah, I love these what, status report conversations. Um, well, it's, it feels interesting these days because there's so many more than previous years because there's so many moving parts. And, and part of that is the technology. Part of that is the refurbishment has gone much, much larger. Remember when it used to, they used to call it Project Stardust. And I do remember it feels Project, like more Stardust, Project yeah. Stardust. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like I've said this several times, but it feels more Project Stardust today than it did during Project Stardust. Um, things have been down forever. That uh, Just lots of, lots of changes and, of course, the parks coming back in terms of things that we haven't seen in a long time returning, including sure. cast members, including crowds and attendance and new magic key systems. So I feel like status report conversations uh, until we get back officially like in a new normal rut is kind of a good topic to kind of spin. Yeah, do it. I love so, it. I love it. This is my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's easy. Yeah. Well, the to that point we've been talking about things outside of the park such as galactic star cruiser we were talking about the reservation system at least as far as it pertains to like revenue management um, strategies we've talked yep. about story living there have been many things going on outside of the park so i'm very happy to bring us back into the park to have a conversation about all of the things that are going on within the park um that's what everybody wants to know anyways so with that being said uh when was the last time you were in the park yesterday <laughs> yesterday and the day before yesterday. and i'm going again today later <laughs> well yesterday must have been a unique experience as opposed to the previous days and today for the obvious reasons that it was a torrential downpour here in california i was there at the i was there at the very worst of it uh got some great video and then and then the sun came out um but yeah it was miserable for a good hour or two at least it was miserable in the parks but as i mentioned in the video i i was um, impressed with the hardiness of the Disneyland guests who they didn't leave. They, they, they got cover. They took cover while it was raining. But as soon as the rain stopped and the sun came out, people just, they were, the queues were immediately filled up. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. I do like Disneyland rainy days. I know it was really windy here yesterday. Was it windy there? Not really. No, it wasn't too bad. Oh, that's nice. You're in a berm. So that helps. <laughs> um, yeah. But I like I do like Disneyland rainy days. The the as heavy as it rained yesterday, that might have been a little bit problematic to be in a park because it's hard to even when you're prepared for rain to deal with that volume is difficult to endure. Well, yeah, there's so there's so few things you can actually do. Like how much shopping or you know I mean, how many dark rides can you get into or that kind of thing. It's like it's so difficult to just do something. As opposed to just standing there yeah. and waiting, which is what you wind up doing. Right. Well, I'm glad that you that you specifically weathered the storm. Bada bing. Oh. Um, <laughs> well played. Well played. Uh, well, with that said, uh, things have been down and things are returning. So I don't. I know. I guess a quick. Before you even get into the park, there's massive, massive construction and reimagination and new things coming to downtown Disney. But uh, what does that scene look like today? Well, it's it's a it looks like an apocalypse, really. If you get on a if you get on a monorail and you look at the site that used to be the AMC Theater, it literally looks like after a, you know a, a, after a. a a big war or something. I mean, it's just, it's devastation what happened to that site, but, and that's what it's going to look for a little while. 
Um, but I, there, it's moving so fast. I've been I've been struck by how quickly that demo happened to the to the AMC building and and they they just went for it. They tore that thing down. Yeah, that's the worst part. Demo is the worst part, and then it, it'll it visually progress will come to a halt when they start going the other direction because yeah, now they're just yeah. breaking down and removing <laughs> and then when they start going the other direction we're going to be saying it's taking them forever to finish this thing but that being said there's so much more space to it appears um that it feels like the things that are coming that we do know of i feel like there's probably going to be a lot more store fronts a store thing it seems like i don't know it just seems like all of a sudden, it just backed up into a wide open area. Yeah, I think I think the 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 buildings that they wind up putting up are going to be smaller than the, the AMC building was huge. It was enormous, as a movie sure. theater should be. So the, the the you know whatever they wind up putting there is going to have a smaller footprint, which does, as you say, create more space in that area you know just for guests and you know the 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 landscaping and that kind of thing it's going to have a definitely it's going to have a different look and feel i've heard rumors that um that what they do wind up putting there they're going to have storefronts facing in both directions both inward toward downtown disney and on the other side facing let's say the paradise pier hotel which will be interesting i don't know how that works but i mean in um, my mind right in my mind's eye i was thinking of um, some sort of show or stage that they have there or another bar, kind of like Uva bar, how it's in the middle, how you're walking yeah. around both sides. Cause there's going to be so much space. They're not going to leave that. Open. Something's going to go in the middle to fill that up. I would Well, assume. grass, they're putting grass in the concept art suggests, I mean, fake grass probably, but the concept art does suggest some sort of open area where people can just sort of lounge around, um, which was great. I, I, I love I that kind of thing. I think that's a great idea. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Doesn't. St- I, just, I mean, it, it. Yeah, I don't know. I have to. I will have to believe that to see it. I guess they they do have. Sense. Disney does have a recent history of trying to monetize every square foot of, of property. So I, I mean, I, I get why you would say that. They, or, they certainly did lean that way in the past. Or at least offer something of value that maybe not a specific like ticketed item or selling food or merch or anything. Uh, just some additional layer of show or layer. Yeah. just something, I guess. I don't know. Um, well, there is a stage. Because, I again, mean, you have to draw people there. Right. That's what I mean. If they enlarge that and make that yeah. into a more, an actual lar- uh, better production or presentation. Cause right now it's just, I mean, good for them for trying to do something, but it's every single time I've seen anything go on there, it's, it's, like the mad tea party that was going on was much higher level than what's going on down there. Yeah, the down you talk about the downtown Disney stage as as it is today. Yes. Not impressive. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not impressive no. to say the least. It is it is like it was an, it's an afterthought is really what it is. It's just like it, yeah, we need a place to put a band here. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like that there's a stage there already. So yeah. they're like let's just throw somebody up on there. Um, yeah, so that's downtown Disney. So as we go into the park, um, your experience, like what, how have, I guess the better way to put it is, have you noticed anything changing over the last couple of months since we spoke about as far as the crowds in the park, the, the lightning lane, um, um, affecting standby Uh, things to that effect. Have you noticed any noticeable trend lines or changes at all? Actually, not a lot. No. I, I, the crowds today, I, I think I, uh, we did some analysis, a friend of mine and I did some analysis on crowd levels based on wait times, standby wait times. Uh, it's a work in progress, but the crowds have actually gone down since the biggest day since the parks reopened was the last President's Day. And uh, that was the busiest day. And I remember that day very well because he, you know, when, he, when we were talking about it, I said, I'll bet you that was the busiest day. And he said, yeah, that was. Uh, cause I remember that was the one day where like, I God, I wish I had genie plus today. Um, cause you couldn't do anything that day. You couldn't do anything on standby, but since then it's yeah. actually, the crowds have actually gone down since then. And the wait times have gone down since then. But, uh, meanwhile, the, the genie plus the wait times for lightning lane have, have maintained, which suggests to me that we're seeing a lot of 
uh, you know, the out of town visitors, the guests coming in from out of town, the, the infrequent visitors, because spring is perfect season for, for out of town guests to come. And they are prioritizing Genie Plus and they are prioritizing specifically the bigger attractions, um, Space Mountain and Splash and Rise of Resistance, that kind of thing. So you're seeing long return times for those, but you're not seeing it, ref you're not seeing long wait times from standby. Standby is still pretty easy. And it makes me wonder. Still, I, I just I cannot get my head around what how Disney is processing our reactions to a the reservation system and our reactions to Genie Plus. I I I, I wish I could be in a room with a Disney exec, you know, executives looking at the data from Genie Plus and Lightning Lane and, and reservations. I wish I could be in the room and, and feeling what 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 do they really think of it. Because they talk about it like it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. We've talked about this in the past that they think the reservations right. well, are the holy grail. Well, they need it to be a JPEG win. <laughs> yeah, no, they yeah, do. They cool. really do. And I just, I just wonder. I, I can't. I can't. I just can't get my myself to believe that this is what they want. That this is a win. I just cannot get myself to believe that that's what they want. Well, it's a, it's a win because if everybody's buying it, that's revenue. But yeah, I know what you're saying, 100. percent But are they I getting agree, enough? Uh, is is this enough? Is what I'm saying. Well, I think there's so many things that you that you mentioned there. Uh, if I can remember some of the things I was going to say. <laughs> One, I don't know. Well, I think d part of what I mentioned a little earlier, the new normal, the new rut, I think coming in right now, to your point, it's spring and people are coming from out of town. I think it is, if you're going to make the trip and you're going to do it and it's your first trip to Disney in a long time or you came from out of town I think it's just behooves you and it's smart to avoid doing some making a mistake by not getting it is just to get oh, yeah. it and pay for it all so you have it so it makes sense from that fashion because for a lot of reasons so that makes sense but then the new normal when it comes in and I think they're obviously forcing us to do it because I've mentioned this to you it's, it has been a few weeks since I've been in the park actually which is a long stretch for me but Previously, when I had been in the park, the wait times for standby were so long. I, I mentioned I just bought Lightning Lane just be, just to go on another ride or two, just because I was like, ah, I'm yeah. not dealing with this because this is, and and so I just did it for for me at that time it was worth it. Um, the other thing that you mentioned is the wait times. I have talk about a, having a, a episode of a podcast. That's probably a great one because my thoughts on the wait times I just don't find. I don't see it as a good barometer of busyness within the park simply because there's so many things that are, that are down. So it's like if yeah. you dispersed a hundred, if you disperse, say 10,000 people, if you disperse 10,000 people throughout all of everything, having the ability to be open and people to consume five bodies here, 10 bodies there, blah, 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 blah all the way throughout the park. Um, or you still have 10,000 people in the park, but there's 10, 15 things that are closed down and it makes it packed. It makes it feel yeah. packed. And then it on makes top it... of that, like right. we're talking, I was just gonna say on top of that, what we're talking about now, everybody's on the mobile order and the genie plus, um, and those genie plus that volume going for it with, for fewer attractions is killing standby and theoretically, and it's making the, the lines. On. So anyway, there's just a lot of moving parts, which makes it such an interesting, all these things are factoring into it. So it is interesting, but your park, you're saying that the standbys have been short. Well, shorter than right. I would have thought. That's what I mean. Like I would, right. I was expecting if, if I was expecting longer standbys, if, Genie Plus was moving. Like if they're moving Genie Plus, then you should have longer standby. Yeah. But it just, I mean, they're not short. I'm not saying these things are walk-ons. I'm not saying you can just run around and do everything you want. But, you know, 45 minutes for Big Thunder, 45 minutes for Haunted Mansion, 30 minutes for Pirates, uh, you know, 45 to an hour for Space. That I mean, that's standard. That's typical. I, that, I mean, right. th those are bad. That's not, that's, that's not like, oh, my God, what's happening to Disneyland type numbers? This, you know, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I find I find that they're all every single ride that you just mentioned, I have consistently for years gotten on it much sooner than the posted times. Yeah, that's just yeah. The, those three rides in particular. It's so funny to me. That's why I have no problem getting on them at those times that you just mentioned. I have no problem getting in line for any of those. Yeah, I would that. get in a 45 minute line uh, for uh, Hana Mansion. 
Yeah, I would too. It goes. It go, maybe uh, part of that might be just mental as well. Like it, it. I have timed it before, and it, it does go quicker than that. In addition to that, it's it's I, it's just an enjoyable place to stand and and converse. I don't know. I just it's a uh, it's okay. Well, um, yeah, the cue is part of the show. The cue is part of the show, and then also the other thing. So, pirates is down. Yep. Um. Pirates is down. Finding Nemo is down. There's other things like ancillary things like Tarzan's tree. Notes, <laughs> you know what's sure. funny? But- <laughs> you mentioned that I was having this cover. I did a state of Disneyland video right the other day, and I was talking about the th- you know I thought there would be more stuff closed, and I completely forgot, completely missed an entire land is closed, Ronnie. And you really <laughs> used to the same thing. Toontown, <laughs> an entire land is closed. And no, like, oh. I, it's on. My, it's on. My, no, it's on my list. I just uh, well, I know, but uh, launch bay. Yes, it just feels like but that's my point. I, I, Toontown. Yeah, to, yeah. Toontown. The combination of Toontown, Nemo, and now currently Pirates is sig. Pirates is a people eater, mm. a massive people eater. So those kind of things, and it's one less lightning lane. And by the way, there's no Roger Rabbit. That's two less lightning lanes. Yeah. And those things factor into now you purchase lightning lanes for the same price, but you now have to cram everybody into the other ones that are available. Grizzly's River Run is down, which is a yeah. lightning lane. So that's coming back soon, though. These things are all. Yeah, for sure. So is Pirates, but it's just the, you know, it, all of it adds up at the same time. So that was an interesting question. So the, the, the refurbs that are taking place. Um, this is interesting in in that when else like it's making the park congested and it's causing constraints and obviously refurbs are good it's for the better it's improving the park it's improving the attractions like those things are the, i'm not disappointed when they happen right it just seems like everything's happening at the same time but to that point, when else are they going to do it? This is the downtime of year. So they want to get everything ready for, I'm just guessing, for the summer and for the holidays. So they're just biting the bullet now and doing all of these things at our, I guess, at our expense, for lack of a better word, while things aren't fully up yet. Right? Well, I would say, yes, you make a point, but that the, the refurb season isn't now. The refurb season was january and february they're, they're supposed to be getting the park ready for spring not for summer they're supposed to be getting the park ready for spring yes. spring is the season of renewal spring is when everything is supposed to be fresh and open not closed and refurbed uh so yeah the timing well, of pirates i think ref- i i think they're doing what they're doing to pirates specifically because they're they planned or decided to do what they're doing to new orleans square because they because they're doing all those you know the yes. reconfiguring of the walkways, they said, well, we they probably should go ahead and do whatever it is that they need to do on pirates while they're at it, because they because that's going to screw up. Imagine trying to put those walls up while pirates is open. I mean, that would be a disaster. And, oh, exactly. Well, that's just it. Is a refurb is a refurb, which is they do for all the attractions on schedule for the most part every single year. Things like that are outliers where this is a completely reformatting yeah. formatting the landscape for World of or not World, sorry, uh, Fantasmic, Fantasmic, which is going to be yeah. opening. So, so in the end, it's a good thing we want it to happen. And the re- and the only reason it came to mind is like. I said oh, another thing I've said previously is it like feels like uh, that Disneyland is kind of on the operating table because there's so many things getting chopped to, to pieces and now they close an entire land since then, and it's it's on an operating table and I started thinking about it and I was like well I get, it's it's not great it's obviously bad it's also when else are they going to do it because they don't yeah. want to do it in the middle of the summer they don't want to do it in the peak seasons I, I guess is my point um, so it's kind of like it's terrible and it stinks. But I just but yeah. that bothers me less than the main point, which is the mobile order and the genie plus. Though the efficiency, if you're gonna do the physical changes and things, you know, at least have the the efficiency and the operations of all the other technical elements, you know, working smoothly and in place. Like don't compound you're not getting problem that? A with comp- with problem B. You're not getting that with mobile think- order? Well, I think mobile order is, I don't like that I'm forced to do it. I don't like that it's, it, it, I mean, it's better, 
mobile order is better. I just in general, like everything is through the app. Every single thing in yeah. is is at, like Lightning Lane. Trying to figure out Lightning Lane and find Lightning Lane, all that is confusing, and I use it a lot. Like it's. Just I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I am, that's what I'm saying. Do. People ask me, "Hey, is it how's Lightning Lane?" I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just say I do it because it's it's just better. It's just like especially when I be there for a short period of time. So here's a good example. Saturday, I'm going to the park, but Duke plays North Carolina, and historical sports events trump disneyland for me because i can go to disneyland any day i want so i'll, I'll go to disneyland for half the day and come back i'll buy lightning lane just so we can just whip through disneyland yeah, and have yeah. fun and do whatever we want to do and, and leave on a half a day so i don't have a problem with that but all i'm saying is when i'm in the app trying i i still have no idea how to use genie that tip board that whole thing i'm a disney park professional uh, attender i have no idea how that thing works it's clunky to me Lightning Lane, I'd only I only go to an attraction that I know has Lightning Lane, and then I, whether I want that one oh, really? or not, on the map, click you on, go through the map. And then I, I go through the show list, yes, and then when I get there, I click on the ride, and then within the ride, for example, Haunted Mansion, I'll, I'll click on Haunted mm-hmm. Mansion, even if I want to go on say Big Thunder, and I'll I'll click on Haunted Mansion, and then Lightning Lane, it will appear like you can get yeah. a Lightning Lane for a Haunted Mansion, and then it shows. Then I click on that, and it shows the list of Lightning Lane. And that, I don't know if that's the way everybody does it, but that's the way I do it because I don't know how else to. No, you can do it so through the tip board. That's my point. It's... You got to go through the tip board, Ron. Well, that's just with the tip board. Like, I don't want to use the tip board because I don't care. I know I don't, I don't need their tips. I am the one with that knows no, what well, I want to do, so the, I can't just. The tip board is that's poorly funny. named. I didn't know I didn't know that. No, the tip board is poorly uh, named because you're not like you're not so getting things. Yeah, you're not getting any tips on that tip board. The tip board literally is the list of attractions and how long the wait is and how you get and that's when you're when you're the that's navigation process that you just described is actually the long way of getting to the tip board. You're right. That's per, that's pretty much that's where hilarious. you're winding up. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it probably is. It's probably redirecting me entirely. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's funny you mentioned that about that because people want to talk about genie plus and lightning lane and whether or not it's worth it the one good thing you can say about what the way they have it set up right now is that at 20 bucks it's still a good value even if you're only using it for a couple rides like you said uh you know i you don't have to use it for every attraction you know you don't have to use it all day if genie plus saves you an hour or an hour and a half on your day by virtue of going on two or three attractions that's a win for 20 bucks that's a win in my opinion uh certainly when you compare that to Yeah, certainly when you compare it to eighty-five dollars at Universal or eighty-five dollars or however much it is at Knotts, because you're paying for the whole you're paying for the whole package. At least with Disneyland, you can you know at twenty dollars you can say I'm just going to use it for space and Indiana Jones and that's it you know or something like that and that's ten bucks a ride. If you were to say, hey, I'll give you you know I'll charge you ten bucks if you can to ride Space Mountain right now, you'd probably say yeah, right? To skip the line, ten bucks seems fair. Yeah, well. I guess it does seem fair. There's also strategies for that. I never use Lightning Lane for Space Mountain either because I, I'm on it at 8.05. But if, what if you can't? Um, but what if, yes. What, what, right, yeah, right. I mean. Yeah, for no. sure. I totally agree with that. There's just ways when you get it, I feel like it's kind of a, a, a supplement to having a park strategy. So using mm. the Lightning Lane, like I, we've always talked about the sing, the single rider for cars, uh, Radio Springs Racers, for example. So you're spacing them out, and you even though you can use Lightning Lane for Radiator Springs Racers, single rider is still by far the best way to go. Same with Matterhorn. Mm-hmm. So you you're using those for where the attractions you want, while you're taking advantage of the other attractions that have this, especially Matterhorn and Radiator Springs. So you're kind of like planning your day, including your meals. So you're constantly doing something and it's just such a fulfilling day because it's like, you're just, there's no stress. Everything is so easy. Um, I, I don't know. That's just the way it is for me per se. That being said, if you know you're going to be there for open to close or for a long, long duration, then there's also no stress because you're just kind of going through the park and you're just kind of saying, well, yeah. we can hit that later. You know what I mean? There's that as you well. Can, so it's yeah. kind of a date. Yeah, if you got if you got the whole day, you can certainly be more casual about how you approach the park, that's for sure. You don't need Genie Plus at that point. So, right. Yeah, exactly. So what with the current state of the parks right now, what have you noticed 
is, is returning. Uh, I know I know we just heard news of Hyperspace Mountain is, is coming back. Uh, yeah, it is coming back, but just for a minute, though, just for Star Wars days. Uh, it'll go right, right back to where it was Disney after... after yeah, the, the Disney After Dark. It was funny how much run that got on social. And people were like freaking out, but I'm like, it's only going to be, it's just two days or three days or whatever. It's not even, well, maybe, I don't know for sure how long, but it's not going to be a very long engagement. That's for sure. Um, no, it's like a week because it, it's the, going through Star Wars Day, which it, so yeah. it comes April 29th. So it's, a, you know. Oh, that's right, because it's celebration. Minimum that's minimum. right. So it'll probably run through celebration. Uh, Star Wars celebrations. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it'll probably run through the end of the month. Well, if it, to the end of May. Yeah. Seems like, it seems like something that they wouldn't want I don't know for a week, right? It feels like if you're going to do it, do it for an extended run, at least like, you know, several weeks. And rather no, that makes day. more sense. But I, I know, thought maybe it's easy. I forgot about celebrations. They would want to leave, they would leave it up until that's done. Uh, so, but even still about, so about a month and then it goes back. What I really like to see them do, if they can do that, then let's go ahead and do, you know, Ghost, uh, Ghost Galaxy. I can't, Ghost Galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bring that back while we're at it yeah. then. Yeah, I do love that. Uh, Space Mountain one is, I, could, I don't know. I, I, I like that they do it because it's just a little flavor, a little taste yeah, on it. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, it's 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 fine. It's I'm, I'm all for basically everything. <laughs> I, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really, it doesn't really ruffle my feathers much. Most no, not at all. Not me thing. either. Uh, and uh, so I guess with all that being said, and then the changes of, of what else? What, what have we not talked about that is has slowly crept back into the parks that we hadn't really seen uh, recently? It's sort of getting us back to where we were and where we're going to be. Fantasyland uh, Theater? Uh, yeah, the, the, the Fantasyland Theater is, is on its way back. They're doing the festival, of the Lion King, or whatever. They, is that what it's called? I can't remember the name of it. Not not festival. Yeah. Tale of the Lion King. That I said, I meant Fantasy Fair, but yes, that is. What oh well, that too, Fantasy Fair. Although we're still waiting to see. I gotta think that they 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 did that remodel so that they could bring the shows back. I can't imagine they were doing that just so they can continue having princesses meet there. But uh, you know, I saw them doing fine fine detail work. You know, like paint that you can't see from a distance paint that you could only see from close right. up, which suggests to me that they're planning on putting shows back in there. Uh, but we're still waiting. We're still waiting for character meet and greets to come back to where they were. Um, I mean, I thought maybe this might be a clue that they could bring the princesses back to uh, to uh, the Royal Hall. But I don't know. I mean, whatever's going on with character meet and greets has nothing to do with COVID. That much we can say for sure. It's strictly a, it's some other some other issue happening there. But um, I do feel like it's we're getting we're well, inching closer. Me, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with with we got Pixie Hollow came back, limited yeah. engagement as it were, but you can meet Tinkerbell again at Pixie Hollow for a short time during the day. Yeah. Uh, but there's still a distance; it's still socially distant. But that's that's an inch closer. It's stepping closer to you know the return. And I and a matter of fact, I think I remember um, the CFO Christy McCarthy saying something to the effect of traditional character meet and greets will be back, you know, I don't know, soon. I don't know if that was the word she used, but yeah. they're on their way back. Yeah, I mean, I heard that too, that basically you can, you're, yes, you will be able to hug your favorite characters again. Yeah. You know, yeah. eventually. And Pixie Hollow is, she's returning to her house now before she was farther away. Uh, she, she was out she there in the little walkway. Waving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, so, okay, so things are coming back. Things are things are happening. It would be, be really nice to have, obviously, Toontown's down forever, but it would certainly be nice to see, just for the sake of Scrims being down, Tarzan's Treehouse returning. It would be nice to see the freaking Lagoon come back, whatever's going on. And either one of those two places is curious. <laughs> and you Total have mystery. you have insight you have you have insiders you have a little uh little little birdies on your shoulders for those things and if you haven't even mentioned that to me or publicly then we it seems like no i've got i've got stuff. nothing i'm hearing nothing on tarzan nothing um the only thing i heard was so a long bizarre. time ago uh months ago i heard that they were replacing all of the natural wood features um for safety reasons i don't know if that's true or yeah. not i haven't right. been able to vet that um, but it certainly, I mean, how long is it? It's been close to September. 
Is that right? Yeah, it's, I couldn't tell you to be honest with you. I don't remember when it went down, but it's certainly been a very Six long time. Six months. Like it feels Six longer months. than it probably has even been. That Good is heavens. insane. That is insane. It um, makes me. Yeah. Well, I, all right. I, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know either. I, I, I never thought that I'd want to see Nemo come back so badly, especially now. Toontown down. I mean, Pirates won't be down that long, but it might be. I mean, Pirates could conceivably be down another month, right? I'm just guessing. Uh, the earliest we're going to see Pirates come back is end of May in time for Fantasmic. I don't think it'll be back before Fantasmic. So we're, so Pirates of the Caribbean is down for two months. Nemo is still down, which is the mm. lagoon, which is a whole area. I know the ride is not a huge people eater, but still. And Toontown is down. And, oh boy, oh boy, that's just such a yeah. It's just crazy to think. It's crazy to think that there's still that much that's not. It that reminds me down simultaneously. It reminds me of the rise construction that they were doing on the rivers of America when that was just down for a year, when oh, they when true. they closed the river for a year. Yep. Interesting. So. All right. Well, anything else that we may not have touched on that you can think of that I didn't mention? Uh, no, I think we covered quite a bit there. I think we got a lot of it as well. Uh, food food items, hopefully, all return as well. <laughs> um, David, this week in Disney history. So there's only five. They're long, but they're all magnificent. So, <laughs> all right. They're actually, they're kind of, they're, they're really, really, really significant, I think. Uh, and one of them is just, a couple of them are just fun. So, David, Disneyland 1961, the Wishing Well and Grotto Marble Figures of Snow White characters opens in Fantasyland. The story of the popular area began this week in 1961 when youngsters from 25 nations participated in a special dedication ceremony, which included Walt Disney himself and members of Variety Clubs International. Since the coins that the guests would toss into the well would benefit the children's charities sponsored by that organization. Walt's dedication speech, wishing long has been a favorite subject of mine. Wishes have come true for many of the characters in my motion pictures and for me too. A wish is really the first step in the realization of a dream or goal. Down through the ages, people have used different symbols to wish for things. Sometimes they looked at the stars and other times the symbol was something else, very often wishing wells. Variety Clubs International is known throughout the world as the heart of show business. Its work, helping needy children, is carried out through many charities in many lands. So here at Disneyland, where we have visitors from all over the world, this Disneyland Variety Club's International Wishing Well is dedicated to youngsters everywhere. When you throw your coins into this wishing well, just remember that wishes made here at this well will really come true for the children of the world. I love Walt's quotes that's yeah that's something that that's quite a quite a thing and he's right i have i have made literal wishes at that well and they have literally come true that is magic magic yeah. of disneyland i love it i love it i love that area too it's such a just it's even wonderful. walking passes very tranquil yeah. yeah uh david another popular subject for me that you dislike uh, i say that of course <laughs> completely in jest <laughs> The Seventh Land at Disneyland, themed after rustic forest areas of the Northwest, Bear Country, open this week in 1972. Featuring, did you know these places? The Maya Long Bar, Teddy yeah. Barra's Swingin' Arcade, the Ursus yeah. H. Bears Wilderness Outpost Shop, and of course, the Country Bear Jamboree, which featured 18 audio animatronic bears in a country music show. The attraction was originally designed as a show for the Mineral King Ski Resort, which Walt had planned on building in the 60s. Walt passed, and it instead came to Bear Country. And Bear Country became Critter Country in 1988 during the construction of Splash Mountain. Did you know about Teddy Barra's Swinging Arcade? Well, that was all part of that one stretch to Pooh poo Corner back there. Um yeah, it they, it, yeah, they were all kind of connected. It was like three stores in one, I think, or three locations in one. Pretty much, it was very small. Yeah, the arcade. Yeah, and 
Okay, so now those were the fun ones. Now this is like just super fantastic historical Disneyland stuff. And those other two were obviously notable, but now this is really good stuff. U.S. President Richard Nixon presents Lillian Disney with the Walt Disney Commemorative Medal on behalf of Walt Disney in recognition of promoting conservation and international friendship. In his remarks, President Nixon stated, Many ceremonies are held in this White House, but none that I think will have more meaning to all of us, young and old, than this one today, because it is my great privilege to present to Mrs. Walt Disney on behalf of the Congress of the United States by reason of a joint resolution and on behalf of all the people of the United States, and I think the world, a gold medal. A gold medal honoring Walt Disney for his service through so many years, not only to the people of the United States, but to the people of the world. To know this man was to know that we had been fortunate to have a spirit with us that perhaps comes once in a generation to fortunate people. That was cool. Wow. Yeah. No, that's something. Wow. Yeah. that Mr. Nixon to Lillian in a grand ceremony in honor of walt disney that's cool and i love hearing people like we know him because he's such an icon for us and we're fanboys in that nature then you look at the historical global context and you hear other people like presidents say such grand things you're like yeah if we're not just in a little siloed world he really was (laughs) yeah no it, it it makes you wish you could have been like lived in his in his world a little bit and and just to see the impact that he was having live you know like to people 100 percent. oh man that would have been something that would have been something i think about that all the time i always think of that yeah. and chaplin to see buster keaton to see chaplin to see walt yeah. disney doing what they were doing the oscars were just this weekend and it was, these are people that were so significant in long before there was such a thing because of the the things that they brought to the table, the things that they created. And I am fascinated by those three individuals. And let's see, 1952. This is fun, David. The Burbank Daily Review reports the first public announcement of a proposed $1.5 million park development project at the corner of Riverside Drive in Buena Vista. As early as 1932, Walt conceived of a theme park that he would want to take his own children to. He regularly took his daughters to ride on the Griffith Park merry-go-round, but found amusement parks to be unkept, filthy, and unfriendly to families with children. He began thinking of a new kind of high-quality, family-friendly amusement park where Disney fans could also meet his famous Mickey. The idea for Riverside Drive Park, as it was known then, located across the street from Walt's Burbank Studios on Riverside Drive, was born. By 1939, Walt had already had his creative people working on ideas for his park. Walt's brother Roy, however, did not share his enthusiasm for the idea. Roy could only see Walt's lack of experience with real estate, construction, and amusement parks as leading to nothing but bankruptcy. Walt, of course, was undeterred. Nevertheless, World War II came soon thereafter, putting the park plans on hold, but this only delayed Walt's resolve. So by 1948, he was back with his vision, planning for construction on now to be called Mickey Mouse Park on the 16 acres of Burbank. But this week in 1952, the proposed park development was announced to the public. When Walt finally presented his plans to Burbank City Council, they were rejected because local politicians did not want to bring a carny atmosphere into Burbank. This and the reality that Walt's expanded vision for the park had quickly grown far larger than 16 acres, which compelled Walt to look elsewhere. The following year, Walt found the 160-acre subdivision in Anaheim for the new location of the park he came to call Disneyland. Hmm. Super cool. Imagine a world where there was no Disneyland. Like there was, yeah. there was, or there was a world, a world where that that, was... that wasn't a thing, and like we take it for granted today that it's just always been there. But imagine like Disney, what you know, like a theme, what, what what are we a, a giant hundred acre theme park? What, it, what <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. he invented that. He invented basically theme parks. 
He perfected all they, all we that's had, for sure. He's still yeah. Well, but they had them before, but they weren't really theme parks. They were more amusement parks. It was different. You know, it was a there was a different quality. Well, that's to true. It. That's fair. Yeah, that's true. People use those words interchangeably, but you're absolutely correct in that. That yeah. and the good example of that's Magic Mountain, not the yeah. disparity exactly. of the parks, yeah. but that's an amusement park. To this day, they still can't get it right. Magic Mountain. Uh, <laughs> no, they cannot. Uh, okay, so this is the, this is the last thing that is very near and dear to my heart, and you've probably heard me mention this many, 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 many times, and it just so coincided uh, this week in Disney history. Who framed Roger Rabbit wins four Academy Awards, the most for a Disney film since Mary Poppins. For editing, sound editing, visual effects, and an award for special achievement in animation direction. Original work on the film began many years before it was produced. The expected high costs for the necessary special effects made Disney executives move cautiously. And it was only when Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis became interested in the project that the green light was given. They were excited by the prospect of creating a toon community with a variety of cartoon characters from different studios together on screen for the first time. It was Spielberg who was able to help along this com- or the complicated negotiations necessary to bring the classic animated personalities together. At the time, Disney had been suffering through a dark age, a 20-year decline of Disney animation as they struggled to find their footing after Walt passed. It was a time of basically trial and error, which the animation shied away from Walt's traditional storytelling tropes and shifted towards darker stories, all of the Aristocats, Robin Hood, the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the Rescuers, the Fox and the Hound, the Black Cauldron, the Great Mouse Detective, and Oliver and Company. Only the Great Mouse Detective was a critical and commercial success when released, even though most of those are now considered cult classics. Yeah. Uh, Roger, Roger Rabbit was a smash hit. So much so it renewed interest in animation and the, to the public. Due to its enormous success among obvi- audiences, not only did it result in spin-off comic books and theme park rides, but it also made the public crave animation like never before and proved to be the best spring for springboard that Disney could ask for. Roger Rabbit's resounding success allowed them to finally move forward with their Disney animated feature their first Disney animated feature based on a classic fairy tale in three decades since Sleeping Beauty, The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. Walt had considered The Little Mermaid in the 30s, and illustrator Kay Nielsen prepared many striking story sketches in pastels and watercolors. These sketches were brought out of the archives for animators to study for inspiration. The film had more effects than any animated film since Fantasia. Nearly 80% of the film required some form of effects work. Storms at sea, billowing sails, schools of fish, shadows, raging fire, explosions, magic pixie dust, surface reflections, underwater distortions, ripples, and bubbles. This week in 1990, The Little Mermaid won two Academy Awards for Best Song, Under the Sea, of course, and Best Original Score. The massive back-to-back success of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and A Little Mermaid over the span of one year launched Disney into the only universally agreed on era. The Renaissance era was Mm -hmm. Disney's most successful era with renewed interest in the company and a return to the musical fairy tale format. All the films in this era were big box office successes. Disney made animated classic after animated classic all through the 90s. The Little Mermaid, The Rescuers Down Under, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Mulan, and Tarzan. That's a hell of a list. (laughs) It is. And I love that topic so much because yeah. I'm so often, so often Little Mermaid gets the credit, and rightfully so. But it really, no, right. was Roger Rabbit that right. that was so successful that it allowed them to finally make the yeah. Little Mermaid. And if, of course, the fact that that was too successful launched everything um, and brought everything back, brought everything back, yeah. which is such a crazy story to think. I think this is also overlooked. The fact that when Walt passed, it it was over twenty years of Disney struggled big time to, f- yeah. to find their footing. They just they didn't they didn't have his guidance and they didn't know what to do. 
Yeah, they sure didn't. They struggled. They sure didn't. They struggled. Um, okay, David. Well, mailbag, and I hope you're ready to talk because these are all mostly specific just for you. So this week in mailbag, <laughs> oh, thank no. you for the questions. <laughs> Yes, yes, pressure, pressure. And I'll even start off from Crazy Girl Daffy. Thanks, everybody, for the questions. Always appreciate them very, very much. And if you send them to me, I always comment and like them. Um, so I appreciate it. We appreciate it because it's good content. David, question from Crazy Girl Daffy. Knowing Ron has not been to Walt Disney World, David, what rides would you want to bring to Disneyland, just hypothetically, from all four parks? Well, I find that humorous, actually, because it's not like I go all the time. I've been once. <laughs> so it's... I know. That's what I'm... <laughs> <laughs> that was 30 years ago, you right? Said you've been there so... once in 30 years? I know. I know. That's funny. Uh, I'm the that's expert okay. all of a that's sudden. That's okay, because I can't even answer. You can. <laughs> uh, well, I would, I guess, okay, so I... If, okay, we're doing one ride from each park? Is that what she asked? That's what she asked, but I think the general consent thought process would be what would you really like to see disneyland have but i'd really like to see the people mover can i can i can we i'll start with that (laughs) the the people mover at uh magic kingdom they still got that that upsets me to this day um i skyway of all the things that i'm jealous about oh god that too yeah uh oh yeah for ronnie ronnie gets the ronnie gets the skyway and i get the people mover from uh magic kingdom uh i would really love I, I guess I, I I love the classic Spaceship Earth at Epcot. I think that would be neat to have something like that here. Uh, I really the, the videos that I've seen of of Everest at Animal Kingdom, you know the coverage I've seen of that looks fantastic. Um, although we've already got the Matterhorn here, but I mean it's still if if I were to, I, you know, you could talk about uh, Pandora, but I'm not impressed from what I've seen of. Flight of Flight of Passage is that what it's called? Um, I would rather have Navi River Run than Flight of Passage, to be honest. Uh, and then uh, Hollywood Studios. I mean, Slinky Dog Dash looks like fun. I would. <laughs> I guess I'd like to have that over here. But to be honest, as far as I'm not really looking to import attractions from other parks. I'm really not. I I like Disneyland the way it is. Um. Or, or to get, give me something that's, that other parks don't have. That's what I'd like to see. What do you want, Ron, besides the Skyway? I want the Skyway because it brings that look that the park yeah. needs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think – I know what I don't want. I don't want Tron. Nope. Uh, I, I, I really don't know – because it, I just don't know the other parks well, even though I read the content and stuff all the time, and I didn't put a lot of thought into it, so I don't know. I mean, uh, there's things that are, I think would be cool. The Beauty and the Beast, and it's not even from yeah. Walt Disney World, but like the Beauty and the Beast attraction looks spectacular. I can't is that Hong Kong? I can't remember where that one is. Um, uh, Shanghai I Disney, think I know, so. has Pirates of the Caribbean, which is outrageous. Oh. Dude, I, I've <laughs> it's been a minute since I've seen a ride through of Shanghai's Pirates, but that was very impressive. <laughs> I mean, good gracious! I don't know and where you put that like building. Video, yeah, yeah. I don't know either. I'm, I'm not really sure. I like. To, I think what you bring up, the main point that I would bring up is it is. It's not necessarily that I like Disneyland the way it is, which I perfectly do. But that being said, I'm not opposed to any changes. I'm just really not. So the when they happen, because they're inevitable, to just be unique. Let let yeah. Disneyland be. Let each park be unique. The, the doubling up of things is just. It's lazy. It's lazy, it, and it takes away character from the whatever the park is, or the two parks, or the three parks that have the, the shared attractions. So st- try to avoid that. A while back, there was an initiative. It, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say I was gonna add. There was an initiative a while back to to do just that to not that attractions wouldn't be shared across parks because they wanted they wanted to give people a reason to travel, but apparently they went the completely opposite direction of that in recent times and they're trying to save money by using cookie cutter attract well not cookie cutter but you've got a blueprint just duplicate that somewhere else and save the money on development i like the rumor and i call it a rumor because i don't think that it has come true not even close is the when avengers campus came that each 
park that had Avengers Campus oh, yeah. have different superheroes. That's mm-hmm. just a cool, in theory, a cool idea. I don't know how it holds up because I don't like anything that they've done with Galaxy's Edge as it pertains to the characters and timelines. So it's yeah. one of those things that sounds great at first, and then when you put it into practice, you're like, ah, I'm not so sure that was a great idea. Yeah. David, uh, question number two comes from Louis Trossel. What dining options would you like to see from Walt Disney World, especially Disney Springs, to be put in downtown Disney? I don't know the first thing about All I know is Gideon's. That's all I ever hear about Disney Springs is Gideon's. So I guess we'll get that. As a matter of fact, I heard a rumor that we might be getting Gideon's when they do the downtown thing. I'm good with that. Give me Gideon's at down Disney Springs. Um the only th- the only thing that I the only dining experience that I've encountered at Walt Disney World that I think I'd like to see here is the Hoop de Doo review. Uh, if only because oh. I love entertainment with my the food, name. I think that's a cool idea. It's yeah, it's a cool name. Uh, but yeah, it, it it makes me think of the way Golden Horseshoe used to be. You know, it used to be a big production like yeah. that. Uh, but there's, I mean, I I don't really need the Beauty and the Beast restaurant or whatever it's called. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Um, and there's again, I like the I like what we have here, but the Hoop to Do review does sound fun. It seems fun too. I've seen video of it. I couldn't even name a specific place up top, <laughs> like off the top of my head, but I know. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I do get you know the emails, and I go through when it's talking about all the amazing food that they have. I gotta I can say that without question i go scroll through the vi- the visual the picture images of of the email from i'm trying to remember who it's from like the the disney disney blog disney disney food blog, blog is probably like who you were and subscribed to yeah the Dis- <laughs> yes the disney food the disney food blog and i see that some of the things that they have and i'm like oh my god that looks amazing i wish yeah. i could get that at disneyland and i can't but outside of something like that i couldn't name of a specific location so, David, do you believe – this is, comes from Alexa Wood. Thank you all for the questions. Da- Alexa asks David, do you believe the dessert party and dining packages of World of Color – this is for both of us – will return? And if so, when? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think they're coming back, all of them. I mean, the dessert packages for Fantasmic and for you know Disneyland Forever and all that, I think they're coming back. I just don't – I don't know when. Um you can even see if you go on the uh, on the Disney website and you look at the restaurants, you'll see there's a there's an option for dining package for each of those restaurants that would have served. You know, uh, I forget. I think it was. Um, oh, I can't remember where I saw them now that I think about it. But they were they're there on the website. They're just saying you know stay tuned or you know details to follow right. or something. I can't remember what it said, but the placeholders are there to do that, and I think that they do plan to because. Um, they're good. They're, 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 it's a good idea to do that. Uh, but yeah, I think they're coming back. I just don't know when. Yeah, I agree. They're 100% coming back. And you know, how do I know that? Because it makes money. They're, they're yeah. not going to talk about perishable, talk about perishable income, right? Is yeah. that is the definition of revenue that cannot be recovered. <laughs> so they will come back for sure. Um, they will have, and to that point, as far as the when goes, I mean, they have to get their stuff as far as employees, as far as they have to get their operational dining situation like worked mm-hmm. out and ironed out. I would think that the sooner they can, the better for them. The sooner that they can offer that, the, they will. But I also think that the technical, so think of World of Color. They want to. I'm sure they want to make sure that they can go unhitched for a, you know a few weeks of everything is kind of perfect and then, then offer it sort of a thing. Yeah, it just may not even the, just all the wrinkles. Yeah, it may not even happen when the shows start. It may be a week or two after the shows start. Yeah, I suspect that since we haven't heard anything yet, we're less than a month away. So yeah, or uh, may, uh, yeah. Three, yeah, we're three weeks away, so I don't think they're going to offer it yet. Yeah, less than a month. But they might. I, I think it'll be very soon. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the questions. I will be reaching out, and you will be responding, as you always do. And thank you very, very, very much. Always good stuff, so thank you very kindly. And same with Five Things Disneyland. And Ashley Burton gave us a good question this week. 
the Ashley Burton Five Things Disneyland asks us, David. Top five Disneyland resort attractions you would most enjoy working at. Wow. Uh, see, here's the thing. If I was going to work at Disneyland, I think I'd want to work backstage. I think I'd want to work like in the offices. But if you're going to put me on stage, <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with the Matterhorn, I think. Now, number five is the Matterhorn mainly because I love the music, I love the goat sounds, and I love the the, the costumes that they wear. I, I feel like those are all great things, and it, it, that would keep me interested uh, for my stay there because uh, that I would want to be entertained a little bit, I think, uh, while I'm working, and I, I enjoy those parts of, the, of that attraction. Yeah, it's just kind of the same approach I took from the standpoint of what could I tolerate for eight hours a day, and I right say that <laughs> exactly eight hours a day, eight hours a day of anything is 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 hard, right? Yeah. So you just want to you just want to be able to, and a lot of that had to do with posi- positioning. I don't want to be in a crunched up position for eight hours, you know, yep. things like that. So that's factored in, into my and knowing my personality and how I would answer this. It was actually really, really easy, the five for me. Um, the number five, I put Rise of the Resistance, but I'd want to be in the Rebels. I want I want to be outside rescuing the people, like oh. running, like being all excited, high energy, excitement, trying to get yeah, them yeah. to be on board the ship to, to escape. Rather than, I don't, what I would not want to be is the dark side, not the dark side, but the... the sure, uh, first order. The, the dark first order uh i would not want to be in there in character for eight hours doing deal like having an interaction with the public <laughs> i think that would be really yeah. hard so you know, they, they, they do a fantastic job i just didn't want to i wouldn't want that energy or that tone to to be in that for the whole day but the resistance side standing up on my feet moving all energetic because everybody's so happy i could see uh, that, I, that, that would yeah be cool. i could see you that being cool. the guy for eight hours, when the door opens, you know, when they cut the thing out of the wall, you're the guy like, come on, come on, we're going to rescue you. That's you. That's Ronnie. Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, that is me. I'm all for that. All right. Uh, number, four. number four. Yeah, I'm going to go Casey Jr. for pretty much the same reasons as Matterhorn. Um, I mean, my love for Casey Jr. is well documented. Uh, I could listen to that music. I could I could ride the train around in circles for eight hours. I could, I could help people get, you know... Uh, get on the train, you know, that whole routine, I, the scenery, the, the the vibe. I mean, it's pleasant. I find Storybook Land and Casey Jr., those areas to be pleasant. And I could definitely do that for eight hours a day, I think. Yeah, that's funny because I wanted to put Storybook Canals for that same reason. I love it so much. And in my mind, I was like, I just don't know if I could sit there like that, like the skippers have to do. No, I couldn't do that. Um, so that did not, that didn't make my list. Um, yeah. But I love the, I love the visuals that you get from there, and that's what mine are. Mine are I, I need to be outside and I want to see. So the monorail to, I would love. I know they move. They, you, they rotate kind of. Oh yeah. The monorail. You're standing up. For me, it's key that I'm standing up. To be honest with you, I want to stand up for my, every second of my shift. And I, other than the, when I'm driving, you know what I mean? Um, sure. But the monorail, because of the visuals, I get to see the light of day. I get to see the, both parks. Just just the monorail. Just so that would be a job that I could definitely get on board with. Yeah. No, and that's then a good I would one. I like even that. Be the, the, I'd be the one, that, the guy that never shuts up when I'm sitting with the people. And I would tell them Disney history. <laughs> like the little kids, I'd get next to them. I could grow yeah. elderly in this role and tell them little Disney fun facts, yeah. a little Disney history. Like it just would be, yeah. it would be a treat. That would be a great yeah. elderly job. Good call. Well, talk about great elderly jobs. My number three is just that it is known for having great elderly people. And that's driving a Main Street vehicle. Uh, I feel like there's a minimum. Well, no, that, I've been actually, now that I mentioned it, I've been seeing more younger folk driving those the truck and stuff today than I had in the past. But I feel like if I could get over the anxiety of driving down Main Street and you know possibly running people over, um, if I could learn how to manage that, I would love to drive the fire truck back and forth up and down Main Street, just like Ken did. Yep. I think you'd get over it. Uh, my number three, any Main Street vehicle. There you go. <laughs> uh, I did pull. 
I did put, well, it's the same thing. I'm, this is going to be a theme for all of these. I'm outside and I'm able to see the, I want to see the light. It is extremely important for me to see the light of day. Like I, I need that in my life. So to be all day outdoors, even if it's pouring rain, whatever, it's fine. But the main street vehicle, but I also put, um, specifically if I could pick, I would take any of them and be happy. The horse drawn carriage, just because I would love that ability to bond with a the, the horses mm. i just think it would be yeah. fantastic i would love it so much um that would be that's what you're doing you're just so happy and you're so just because i know i have a golden retriever just the way i Django fett the way yeah. i um bond with him and then that ability to do with the horses and it would just be fantastic it would be fun any they do seem thing. to have they do seem to have relationships with the horses like which i think is really sweet they do yeah, I know for sure that they that they would, because it's hard not to. I grew up with horses in the Midwest when I got out of California, and they have they're like dogs. They have personalities. Yeah. They know they're yeah they're shockingly smart. And I guess I I only say that because it caught me so off guard when I was younger. Like oh my gosh, these things are unbelievably intelligent. <laughs> uh, so you do form a bond. Um, so that's fantastic. So David, number two, number two, uh, Walt loved trains, and so do I. So. Uh, I, I, I could work the Disneyland Railroad. Any any number, I mean, from, from the Tinder to just being the guy that says all aboard, um, you know, the guy on the speaker, all those jobs, just being able to ride the train around the park all day seems pretty darn magical. And it's a thing that I, I, I don't think I would tire of. I think I could do that all day and, and be good with it. The only thing that I would have trouble with with the train is that squeaky, <laughs> that squeaky bit that happens along the river on the backside uh, as you're going by, going by uh, Mike Fink's house. That would probably drive me nuts because my ears are too sensitive for that. But otherwise, I think I could, I could do the Disneyland Railroad. I would love that, actually. I think I would. Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool one. Uh, my number two is the Mark Twain. Once again, I'm outside. Once again, yep. I'm at one of my favorite, if not my favorite place in the entire park all day long is watching over New Orleans Square just to see the, all the happy people. and just It's just a vibe. Uh, listening to the recording all day, even though it's a very soft, soothing sound, which I always say that he sounds all sultry to me. <laughs> he does. He, in a, in a, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way. Is. But anyway, the Mark Twain being on the Twain, seeing people come in, just and then even going up, getting away from people to up in the. If I could, drive. yeah. I pulled the horn on the on Fresh Break proper the show. You did. And it yeah. was glorious. <laughs> so the Mark Twain, I could do all day long. Yeah, I, I would I would say yes number to that one, as well. Number one, David. Yeah, that one didn't make my <laughs> list. I, I wish it had. My number one uh, is gonna is interesting you because you mentioned Rise of the Resistance and how you want to be part of the Resistance and not the First Order. But I'm here to tell you that I could do First Order all day. I my I have a natural sort of stoic. I have a get away from me face sometimes. That's what I'm told. Like. I can do no expression yeah, and just get over here. I can I can do that. I think I could be one of those first order jerks <laughs> for eight hours. I would enjoy it actually, just not having to like express anything, just be stoic and mean and just tell people where to go. I could do that. I could definitely I would enjoy that actually. I think you would. I the first ten <laughs> times I met you. I was like, I don't even know why I say hi to that guy. That so it's funny. totally not true. It's not. It's it's only on the outside. I, it, that's not how I feel inside, but it looks like that. It, I get that. Yeah, I I believe that you do, uh, for <laughs> sure. And yeah, so yeah, that's true. Like, I I get it. Uh, I think you would be excellent for it. I think. It'd be nice, I guess, if you're going to work on the Rise of the Resistance, I think, since we both selected it. I think it would be very cool to have the opportunity. There's a lot of characters and a lot of yeah. cast members on that attraction with very specific roles throughout. So a nice little rotation on the same attraction would be excellent. So I could do it in bits and pieces. Uh, it, I, I don't know if I could keep a straight face because I wouldn't even take myself No, you couldn't. You couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you would, you, right. and that was an I, I just can't see you doing it. You'd be like, "No, I'm just kidding, guys. We love you guys. Get out there." <laughs> yeah, 
I, I was hardcore. I'm a better smiler than jerk. Uh, For sure, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if that's true either. Uh, my number one, David, you nailed it. You said it. It's the Disneyland Railroad. Being outside, first of all, I think they have the best co- uh, cost. Uh, cast member uh, uniforms or outfits. Custom. I no, you had it right. Better. It is costume. Uh, <laughs> Um, it, it, it is warm. I mean, when it's warm, they're lo- it's loose and comfortable mm-hmm. and the suspenders and pinstripes. It just looks cool. It looks comfortable. There's things that the, that the people on that attraction that work on it, the, the cast members have to do when the train stops by the little mill on the, the left, the little where they're, yeah. you know what I mean? They just like let all the steam out by new Orleans square and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, just riding around the track, the entire Disneyland park and, and in its entirety. And then even the entrance, when you're at the entrance, you can see out into the Esplanade and then you can see into the park doing that all day long out in the weather, seeing the weather you're on your feet. Uh, it's just all the things that I mentioned previously that, that is, um, sign me up. I could do that for eight hours. No problem. In fact, I'd volunteer to do it if they'd let me. Well, well, that's pretty much the gig. <laughs> they don't wow. pay very then well, we... so it's practically <laughs> a voluntary gig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that brings us to the end of the show, David. Anything? Oh my God, uh, we did we it. Didn't get to that you want to? We did. Nothing. Nothing. You got nothing. Oh. No. 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 Nuts and bolts and bow ties. Uh, bow ties. Yeah, sure. Um, even. <sighs> Like I always say, no matter what you no matter what you want to say about whether or not the park is working or not, full capacity, closed attractions, di- mobile orders, a pain, Genie Plus, et cetera, et cetera, the magic never ends at Disneyland, Ron. The magic never ends. Um, you can't you can't do the whole park in a day anyway. So I try not to worry about all that stuff and just go and have a good time. Go to Disneyland, enjoy yourself. That's that's my uh, closing thought. That's an excellent button to put on it, and I totally agree. And I would even add this in everything that he said, just said. I would say that it, it's only going to get better. I think that yeah. there's th- there's things that are going to work themselves out and Disney's operations and all the problems, that, quote unquote, that we may be able to point to right now. Uh, that's all going to get ironed out and smoothed out. More yeah. things are going to open. Uh, all that's going to be very, very good. So that's the beauty is we get is going to get better even. And it's already pretty dang great. Yep. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the show. So I guess until join us next week when we talk about yet to be determined topic, which is always the case. So until then. Fresh baked. Fresh baked. <laughs> He's always so proud when I get it right. Yeah. <laughs>